Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We want to thank God for his faithfulness for bringing us into the eighth month of the year. And for the program tonight, remember me, O oh Lord. We want to appreciate him. From your heart, I want you to begin to appreciate the Lord, begin to worship the Lord, begin to adore the Lord for his faithfulness, for his care, for his love over you and your family, over us as a church, for a time again to come together to pray. I want us to thank him. Let's thank him. He's the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the I am that I am our husband, our maker, our creator, the defender of the whole universe, our provider, our defense, the one who is the one who has been and will remain forever. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. We have come today to give you all the glory. We say, Aloe be thy name. Father, Aloe be thy name. We have come today to say, Lord, we can see you moving in our favor. For all you have done for us, Father, we thank you. We return today as that one leper to say thank you, Jesus, for the month of August, for all we've been able to do for Tuesday, digging deep, the first digging deep of the month. Father, for the success of the, co uh, Holy go uh, of the convention, Lord, we thank you for all that you have used our Father and the Lord to do, everyone that minister. Thank you for feeding us through the convention. Thank you for revealing your heart to us. Oh, thank you, Father, for showing us where you are taking us to. Lord, we give you all the glory. From the bottom of our heart, we have come to say thank you. And because of what you have done, Father, we want to say again that we will continue to trust you. We will continue to trust you. We will continue to trust you. Father, we give you all the glory. Thank you for the men. Thank you for the women. Oh, Father, thank you for the boys, for the girls. Thank you for our children. Thank you for every one of us. Thank you for all you've been doing for us. You have been so good. You have been so kind. You are so good. You are so kind. Almighty God, you are so good, you are so kind. Almighty God, you are so good, you are so kind. Almighty God, you are so good, you are so kind. Almighty God. Father, we acknowledge your goodness, your kindness to us. And we are here this evening to say we will continue to trust you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. As we enter the prayer time, I want us to sing this song. And it will be put on the screen for you. Jehovah, you are my banner of victory at all times. I will trust you. I shall never know defeat. Jehovah, you are my banner of victory at all times. I will trust you. I shall never know defeat. I will trust you in the night time. I will trust you in the daytime. Lord, I trust you every moment all the way. I will trust you. I will trust you in the night time. I will trust you in the daytime. Lord, I trust you every moment all the way. A servant wait on masters, so my eyes are on you, Lord. I will trust you. I shall never be ashamed. A servant waits on masters, so my eyes are on you, Lord. I will trust you, I shall never be ashamed. I will trust you, I will trust you in the night time. I will trust you in the daytime. Lord, I trust you every moment all the way. I will trust you. I will trust you in the night time. I will trust you in the daytime. Lord, I trust you every moment all the way. 
As he's round Jerusalem, so the Lord saw round his own. I will trust you, I can never be moved. As he's round Jerusalem, so the Lord saw round his own. I will trust you, I can never be moved. I will trust you, I will trust you in the midnight, I will trust you in the daytime, Lord I trust you every moment of the way, I will trust you, I will trust you in the midnight, I will trust you in the daytime, Lord I trust you every moment of the way. I will trust you, I will trust you in the midnight, I will trust you in the daytime, Lord I trust you every moment of the way. I will trust you, I will trust you in the midnight, I will trust you in the daytime, Lord I trust you every moment of the way, I will trust you, I will trust you in the midnight, I will trust you in the daytime, Lord I trust you every moment of the way. I will trust you, I will trust you in the midnight, I will trust you in the daylight, Lord I trust you every moment all the way. Begin to confess it to the Lord that you trust him every moment of the way. Mazokeli ali darika seti adu vasuta ali garito sata mania tetahasi kalinde ni ani nari garia dodoshia di vasuta mazuati lahedi adi garaba daba gaboshi adi gateti ali da rigade mato hali daria labashende. I will trust you, Lord, in the midnight. I will trust you in the daytime. I will trust you every moment of the way in my life. I will trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Psalm 123 from verse 1 to the end. We are reading together. It's just I think six verses. We are reading together. Or one to four. I think it's four verses. We are reading together. Amen. Amen. Psalm 123. I want you to come with me either from your iPad, from your phone, from your Bible. Anywhere you have the scripture on now, I want you to come with me. Psalm 123. He said, unto you I lift up my eyes, O you who dwell in heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hands of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hands of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord, our God, until he has mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. For we are exceedingly filled with content. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorn of those who are at ease, with the content of the proud. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. This Psalm 123 is closely related to Psalm 1 to 1. From this very psalm, it shows to us the prayer of a man who has nowhere to turn to but to God. From this very psalm, it shows to us a prayer of a man who trusts God and is seeking for help only from God. He said, I lift up my eyes. I lift up my eyes up unto you. Amen. Amen. This psalm revealed to us that is a prayer of someone seeking for God's mercy and trust God to obtain the mercy. And we want to pray, telling God that we are looking up to him, that we are trusting him before we share the word. And the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to know that many times David had issues that want to question his trust in the Lord. Issues come around him. Several times the enemy came to him to want to take his life. And it looked as if they will prevail. But he never shifts concerning his trust in God. He knew there was someone who takes control of everything no matter what is happening. David knew there is someone who has a final say over matter. 
So the relationship between David and God gave him the understanding that it is only God that does not fail, that man can fail. And relationship between David and God made David to understand that God is the one that had the final say over every matter. So David knew that it's only God who can keep his covenant. He knew that king on the throne, that means no any king on the throne is greater than, uh, than the king he's talking about. The king that he's talking about that he's low is greater than every other king on earth. In fact, he knew that this king is greater than him and his respected throne himself. Amen? Amen. So he knows that God has a throne that supersedes other thrones. And also this evening, who are we looking up to? What are you trusting God for? What miracle are you expecting from God in this season concerning your Christian journey? Are you expecting revival? Are you expecting spiritual growth and upliftment? What are you believing God for concerning your business, concerning your career and family? If there's anything you need and you know some people can do it for you, even if you know they can do it, before you even go to them, what you need to do is to appear before God. Because most of the time when you appear before God is the one who will put it in their hearts for them to do it. Because sometimes when, you do, when we do that, go to them before we come to God shows that we don't actually put our trust in him. But even if I have somebody that can do a thing, the first thing to do is to appear before God and that is telling God that I put my trust in him even though this person is the one you will use. So the reason why we experience disappointment is because we find it easy to trust man because of their status and they disappoint us big time. Amen? Amen? That is to let us know that no man can be trusted. They will end up, including myself, they will end up disappointing you. This very moment, God wants us to look away from man and look up to him. He said they look up to him, their faces were radiant and they were never put to shame. God wants us to look up to him. Amen? Verse 2 of that scripture, even from the song we sang, he said, Behold, at the eyes of servant, look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of the maid to the hand of their mistress. So our eyes look up to you, our God, until he has mercy on us. It means servant don't look as we are, but their master, always they look at their master. Likewise, we are not to put ourselves in such position that after God, <laughs> I mean, we are to put ourselves in such position that after God, no man can help. Before God, no man can help. Outside of God, no man can help. So if you have such trust in God, as you continue to look up to him with your heart, then God arises to show mercy. When, you look up, when we look up to him and he shows us mercy, then what we are believing him for, show forth. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 3, say, have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorn of those who are at ease, that's verse 4, with the contempt of the proud. That means there are certain things in our life that men are mocking. A whole family is mocking. But when God shows mercy, that mockery, we turn to testimony. So we are going to stand on this scripture to pray. And I want you to pray, you are going to thank the Lord. Say, Father, Father. I thank you. Because I have you to look up to. And I know you will not disappoint me. I want you to talk to the Lord. Father, you are not a disappointer in the name of Jesus. Father, I crown to you, I thank you. Oh, I have you to look up to because I know you will not disappoint me. Father, we give you all the glory. We appreciate you. I want you to appreciate the Lord of hosts. I want you to appreciate him for the gift of life. Oh, that your name is not erased from the book of the living. We give you all the glory for the privilege of life. Our name is not erased from the book of the living. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we bless you. We say, Lord, be thy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I continue the journey of this year and this month, every canality in me that can mar my journey this year, Lord, forgive me and empower me to overcome my flesh. Empower me to overcome my flesh. Father, as I continue the journey of this month and this year, every carnality in me that can mend my journey this year, Lord, forgive me and empower me to overcome my flesh. My flesh will not rule over me. In the name of Jesus, my flesh will not rule over me. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Verse 1 of that Psalm 123 says, Unto you I lift up my eyes, all you who dwell in heavens. Which means, unto you do I put my trust. All you who dwell in heaven. We put our trust in God. You are going to tell the Lord, say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In you we put our trust. And we lift up our eyes to you. As a church. As we continue the journey of 2020. And beyond. Do not let us run Elta Skelter. Over any of our member. Take trouble away from us. Take trouble away from the businesses and the career. Of our members in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We trust in you and we lift up our eyes to you as a church as we continue the journey of 2020 and beyond. Do not let us run elter skelter over any of our members. Father, take trouble far away from their doorposts, from every doorpost. Take trouble far away from their businesses, from their career. Oh Lord, let it be that over any of our members will not have to run elter skelter. You will protect everyone. You will preserve everyone in the name of Jesus. You will protect everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in you I put my trust. And I lift up my eyes to you. Oh, Lord, take trouble away from me. Over my children, over any member of my family, let me experience rest rather than trouble. I want you to talk to the Lord. Father, I lift up my eyes to you. You are the only one I trust over my family, over my children, over my husband, over my very self. Father, take trouble away from me. Oh Lord, take trouble away from my doorpost. Let me experience rest rather than trouble in the name of Jesus. Let me experience rest rather than trouble in the name of Jesus. Grace. In the name of Jesus, we lift up our eyes to you. Father, prove yourself faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to pray. As you know, a time, the time is getting nearer for the church to be open again. We are going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our eyes to you. As a church, as we journey this year, and we reopen the church. Let your sure protection rest on every family represented in OTP. Your sure protection. Your sure protection. Father, there will not be regret in reopening of the church. You will take charge. You will show that in Zion, there is healing. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. Oh, COVID-19 will not be spread in Zion. It will only be arrested as you reopen in the name of Jesus. Father, in you we put our trust. Let your sure your protection rest upon us and every family, both home and abroad, in the name of Jesus. Oh, let your protection, oh Lord, come show upon us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to pray. Say, Father, Father. in the name of Jesus, Amen. we lift up our eyes to you as we continue the journey of life. Oh Lord, let the door of assistance and help be open to the helpless among us in OTP. I want you to open your mouth and pray. Father, as you continue the journey of life and we come together in the church, you will pray today let the door of oh God, Father assistant and help be open to our members that are helpless or to every one of us that are helpless. Let the door of assistant be open in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are going to pray for yourself. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I look up to you, O oh Lord, concerning the journey of life, let the door of help and assistance I need at any time be open to me. Oh Lord, help me not to be stranded in the journey of life. The door of assistance that I needed at any time, let it be open to me. I will not be stranded in life in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, will not be stranded. Will not be stranded. Will not be stranded. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The good woman sang a song in my dialect. Mo wo jure, o lo ru mi. Mo wo jure, e le da mi. Bo mo kunri ti wo, o wo baba re. Bo mo birin ti wo, o wo iya re. 
Nimo wo Jesu titi o fi da mi lola. The meaning of that song is in verse 2 of that Psalm 123. Hallelujah. Amen. You are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our eyes to you concerning every of our members in OTP whose situation has turned to mockery. Lord, in your mercy, attend to them and draw them closer to yourself. Attend to them and draw them closer to yourself. Attend to them and draw them closer to yourself. In the name of Jesus, attend to them and draw them closer to yourself. Oh Lord, prove yourself faithful. I want you to tell the Lord, Father, we lift up our eyes to you concerning Nigeria. The situation of Nigeria that has turned to mockery in the whole world. Intervene and establish your will in this nation. Let every prophecy spoken about this nation come to pass. Let every prophecy spoken about Nigeria come to pass. Father, concerning Nigeria, we lift up our eyes to you. The situation that has turned to mockery in this nation. In the name of Jesus, oh, intervene and establish your will. Let every prophecy spoken about Nigeria oh not come to pass in the name of Jesus. Father, you that dwell in heaven, we look up to you. Every good news we are expecting, let it manifest, O oh Lord. Every good news we are expecting over Nigeria, in our family, in our businesses, in ministry. Father, let it manifest. In Jesus' name we pray. Now you are going to pray your personal prayer before we go into the word. You are going to tell the Lord, Father, I lift up my eyes to you. The good news I have been expecting. And the one I'm not even expecting. Concerning this, concerning that. Lord, let it manifest. Maybe concerning your job. Maybe concerning your health. The good news I've been expecting. I want you to open your mouth and pray. And say, Father, I lift up my eyes to you. The good news I've been expecting. And the one I'm not expecting. Concerning this, concerning that. Lord, let it manifest in Jesus' name. I want you to open your mouth and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. I lift up my eyes to you. The good news I've been expecting. Maria Koposhi Kale Gosun Toria Garia Doba Sutalia. That good news. Hai Darikati Sakaidi Babu Dari Kalebo. That good news concerning the Hile do Bosketali Daria Daba Sutalia. Maroko Siale Boshita. That good news. Let it manifest in Jesus' name. Let it manifest in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. You are going to tell the Lord, say, Father. In the name of Jesus, I lift up my eyes to you. Defend me from any torment. Prepare for me to cause me sorrow as I continue the journey of this year. Any torment prepared for me, prepared for my children, prepared for my family. Oh Lord, Father, defend me from it. I will not sorrow as I continue the journey of this year. I want you to pray. The Bible says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. I want you to pray. Say, Father, we lift up our eyes to you and we pray. Exempt Exempt us, O oh Lord Father. Exempt us from that very evil that is programmed into the remaining days of this year, the remaining weeks of this year, the remaining months of this year. Exempt us and our family in the name of Jesus. Exempt us and our family in the name of Jesus. Exempt us. I want you to tell the Lord Father, we lift up our eyes to you. Permit, O oh God Father, do not permit untimely death in our camp. Build your wall around us in Olive Tree Parish. Build your wall around us. We refuse record of evil. In Olive Tree Parish, in the name of Jesus, we refuse the record of evil. In the name of Jesus, we refuse, we, ref, we refuse the record of evil. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we worship you. We give you all the glory. We pray, O oh Lord, Father, as we have cried unto you, you will answer us and will return with testimonies. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our team for the month of August in this house is trust the Lord with all your heart. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Amen? Amen. And the anchor scripture is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Amen? Amen. The statement revealed to us that trusting in the Lord can only be confirmed when it comes from the heart. Amen? Amen. Trust the Lord with all your heart. That statement is revealing to us that when I say I trust the Lord can only be confirmed when it comes from the heart. It, do, it, it, it is not what we do just by saying it, but it must come from the heart. And when it comes from the heart, you act it out. You live it out. Amen? So our topic tonight, I want to charge us with, and we pray, 
I want to give a charge on this topic. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Please open with me to Proverbs chapter 3 verse, um, let me say, uh, no, we've read it, okay. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6. We have read it because of time. But let me just read. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Amen? Amen. The first thing I want to uh, do is to define trust. What is trust? Trust is a firm belief in the reliability of someone or something. When you trust somebody, you believe it firmly that he or she is able to do what it, it, what it is that he or she is expected to do. Or what it is that that person promised, what that person promised to do. Amen? Amen? Number two, trust is a firm belief in the truth of someone or something. You just believe. You just believe in somebody. Amen? Amen? When you trust somebody and the person tells you, I'm coming, you rely on it. You believe and you know that and you know you know it, that it will surely come. When you trust somebody and that person say, I will give it to you. You just have the strong belief that he will give it to you. He will not deny you. In the truth that what that person say, you believe it, that he will give it to you. He will do it. Little children have a great level of trust in their parents. If you tell a child, I will buy you an aeroplane, and you point the plane in the air, the child just believes that mommy will buy me an aeroplane. He just trusts what you said. Why? Because their trust has not been tampered with. Number three, trust is a firm belief in the ability of someone or something. You just believe that the person is able to do it. He has the capacity to do it. Amen? Amen. Number four, trust is the acceptance of truth of a statement or utterance of someone without evidence or investigation. Somebody said something, you are not investigating it. You just believe it. Without evidence that what that person is saying is the truth, but you believe it. And that is what happened to us with the Bible. You believe what has come out of his or her mouth, that it is true without investigating it, without evidence to prove it. One of the most unfortunate things in our generation today is that things have been so sugar-coated and so adulterated that every word trust that you have heard from anybody has been destroyed. We all come around and just sit on the chair without thinking whether it can take us, you know. You just come in now, I just see a chair, and I just sit on it. I'm not thinking whether I can carry my weight. I'm not thinking whether I will fall on it. But yet, I just believe that that chair will do what? We carry me. I don't check it at all to see whether the leg is standing well. We have the trust that the chair can carry our weight. How many times have you woken up in the morning and you want to come down from the bed, and as you are stepping out, you are trying to see whether the ground can carry your weight? Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And how many times have you woke up in the morning and you just held your breath and said, I don't know whether the breeze, whether the oxygen that is blowing now is corrupted. I need to check it, the oxygen that God has provided, whether it is the correct one. I need to check the quality of the standard of the oxygen before I can breathe it in. Why? We trust him in that area. Amen? Amen. There are daily basic things about God. That we all trust him about. But unfortunately, many of us have failed to trust him for everything. And he wants us to trust him for everything. We fail to trust him in other things. We trust him on average things that, uh, that, on average thing that Grant can carry us. But there are other things that we don't trust him about. So it looks obviously okay when we sit on a chair and we believe that he can carry us. But I tell you the truth. That the worst thing that can happen to any man or any woman in life is to be distrusted. And when I say distrusted, it's very deep because today, a lot of people have been quoted to be distrusted, but it is even the person that is claiming that they are distrusted that is the one that is distrusted. When you are not trusted, when somebody distrusts you, it's discouraging. I want us to know that. It is a breach and it is not palatable. Then why do we want, why do we, why are we not trusting God? That means we are discouraging God. When we want people to trust us and we can't trust God. He said, beloved, I wish above all things that you do what? You prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper it. And we still doubt it, that this is what God wants of us. He says, I will bless your bread and bless your water. I will take away sicknesses away from the midst of thee. And yet, we still distrust him with that statement. 
He said some trust in chariots, another trust in horses, but we trust in the name of our God. And then we still express fear when we are confronted. Amen? Amen. Lack of trust in God is a great temptation. We need to overcome, as children of God, we need to overcome it, that lack of trust. And the Lord will give us opportunity to overcome it in the name of Jesus. Amen. For us to see the best of God, we must overcome lack of trust. Amen? Amen. When a person is distrusted, it is discouraging. That should let us know how God feels when we don't show trust, when we don't trust him. Many of us trust God enough to step out in the morning without doubting that we can just move with our leg. Without doubting. But there are certain areas of our life that things are not going well and we don't trust God that he can do something about it. And that's why we are not seeing the best of God. May we overcome the temptation of distrusting God in Jesus' name. Now, what are the benefits of trusting in God? What are the benefits? Number one, fruitful at all times. Not anxious about the year of drought or famine that we, are, that we are now. Not anxious. In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 to 8, because of what has happened about COVID-19, not anxious about how will I do, what will happen, hey, how will I do this? You are not just anxious, you, just, you are just fruitful at all times, not anxious in the year of drought or famine. Jeremiah 17, 78, says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and who so peace in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, who spread out its, its roots by the river, and will not fear when it comes. But its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor cease from yielding fruit. I want us to know that when you trust God, fatness, abundance, supplies actually increase. I'm not talking about trusting God with your mouth, confessing and declaring Bible, but not from your heart. He said, we feel your bond to overflow and your increase will multiply, even in famine. When you trust God, he blesses you because he knows that you believe in his ability to provide for you. In Proverbs 28, 25, he that is of a proud house, stirred up strife, but he that put out his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. That is the word of the Lord. Number two, benefit, direction. When you trust in the Lord, what happens? You receive direction. Just from our anchor scripture in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So when you trust the Lord, he gives you direction. The situation we are now, we need direction. You don't miss your way. You don't move around in life aimlessly. You take every step according to his guidance for your for, uh, uh, for your trust is totally, absolutely in him. Amen. Amen. It leads you in the path that you should go. Just as Psalm 23 verse 3 says, he tells us he leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So he gives us direction. We don't hit our leg against the stone. He gives us the knowledge of his will concerning our life part time. Number three, what are the benefits of trusting in the Lord? Safety. You experience safety. Proverbs 29 verse 25 Proverbs 29, verse 25, said, The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. Amen? Amen? When you trust in the Lord, you will be saved. So trust in the Lord guarantees safety. Trust in the Lord guarantees your preservation. Trust in the Lord ensure that anywhere you are part-time, his shield is over you. When you trust in the Lord, God arises up to the occasion because you are, your confidence is in him and you are believing in his ability to protect you. And you know you are not depending on anything, so he, he, he keeps his shield around you. A couple of times I had testimony of people who experienced the practical shield of God. A young man left a vigil one time, and when he left that vigil, some men accosted him. He was accosted by some hoodlums. And when he saw them, and they were shouting on him, stop, 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 he did not stop. And as he was going, he felt a cold hand behind him. So they began to shoot. And as they are shooting, he saw that the, the, I mean, the bullet of what they are shooting is falling back. Then after a while, he moved, and those guys began to run away because they are afraid. that ah, What sort of a person is this? Why? Because that means he experienced the practical shield of the Lord around him. Because the shield of the Lord is as good as the hand of the Lord that covers us. To let us know that God has the ability to protect us. And by whatever means, he will preserve us. He will keep us safe. Those that trust in him, God keeps in safety. I see the trust you have in him, uh, in God, will make him arise to protect, to preserve you in this season in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Number four benefit is strength. You receive strength. In Isaiah 26, verse 4, he said, Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. In the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So trust in God is guarantee of strength. Everlasting strength means you grow from strength to strength. And he confirmed this in Psalm 84, verse 7. He said they go from strength to strength, each of them that appear before him in Zion. So when you trust God, you, 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 strength is guaranteed for you. Amen? Amen? Number five, benefit. Those who trust in the Lord will be delivered from wicked schemes and plans of the evil people. They will be delivered from wicked schemes and plans of the evil people. Psalm 37, Psalm 37 verse 39 to 40. He said, but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Hallelujah. Amen. As you trust him, I tell you, God will deliver you from the scheme and the plans of the wicked. Number six, what benefit again? Mercy of the Lord surround those who trust him. As we sang that song, as he surround Jerusalem. So the Lord surround his own. Amen. Amen. Psalm 32, verse 10 to 11. Psalm 32, verse 10 to 11. He said, many sorrows shall be to the wicked. But he who trusts in the Lord, and that is you, and that is my very self, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous. And shout for joy, you, all you upright in heart. Number, what are we? Number seven. Which, which is the last benefit? Our mind stays in peace when we stay focused on the Lord. When we trust in him, our mind is put to rest. We are at peace. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Amen? Amen. Because he trusts in you. So when you trust the Lord, this seven benefits, many benefits, but seven I'm able to bring out because of time will work in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, before we go into communion, how do you come to the trust level of relationship with God? How do you come to the level of trusting God? Number one, through a life of prayer and worship. It is learning to dwell in the secret place of, the, of prayer and worship. In his presence, it is about a solid relationship with God. Trust is an advanced level of relationship with God. You move to the level, you get advanced in your relationship with God. You don't just believe him, you just trust him. You know without a shadow of doubt that he is there for you, even when you can't trace him, even when you can't feel him. He's learning to say with your mouth and, and from your heart what you really believe. You say that this is what I believe. That is what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were thrown into the fire. They just know that God will come through for them. So it is in the fire what you believe come out of your mouth. These guys just know that God will come, will come through for them. And he came out and they were saved. Number two, how do you come to the level of trusting God in your relationship with God? With all your heart, you focus on him. With all your heart, you, with all your heart, you focus on him. And you don't lean on your understanding. When you don't lean on your understanding, you don't lean on your intellect. You don't think of what you know. God might be asking you to do something that looks foolish. You get to the level of just doing it. Just taking the risk to do it. That is why in Proverbs 3, 5, 5 and 6 that we read, read say, we should not lean on our own understanding. Because when most of the time we walk by our understanding, we cannot trust God. Because God will ask you to do certain things that look foolish sometimes. So when it is with all your heart, you don't mind whether what he's saying that you should do looks foolish. Whether what he's saying that you should do is not acceptable by men. But you just go and do it just like, just like Abraham. He asked him to go and sacrifice Isaac. Looks foolish. The only child he's been asking for. And God is saying, give it to me. As God demanded Isaac from you. And you're not leaning on your understanding to think about how do I give this Isaac? What will I do again? God telling you to give what you're not supposed to give, what you feel you already attached something to it. And I say like that, the Jew said during convention, he said when, the, the, when Father Yomi said they should go and empty their account, he was the only one that obeyed. He looks foolish, but look at what he brought into his life. He just trusts the voice of God in the life of Baba Akinda Yomi, and he went and he just emptied his account. Can you be told to do that and you just go and you empty your account? Number three, how do you get to that level of trust in God? It is learning to say with your mouth and from your heart what you really believe. 
Not just saying it. You know, we can quote scripture. It is in the, that just as I said, it is in the fire situation that we, we, what you believe will come out of your mouth. Learning to say it. You begin to say it. And number four, humility and dependence on God as a child of God. When you are humble and you show your total dependence on God, it shows that you trust God. Just as children trust in their parents with humility and dependency, they just believe. They don't mind anything. So because they don't mind and because they believe, I tell you the truth. They receive what they never get anxiety over what they ever told their parents that they want. So when you depend on God, it shows that we trust him. I want us to pray. I will partake of the communion. I want you to say, Father, Father. in the name of Jesus, I believe in your ability and reliability. I believe that you are truthful. I believe you without investigation. I believe that you are real in my life. And in RCCG. So therefore, oh Lord, demonstrate the result of my trust in you. I want you to open your mouth, Father, I believe in you. I believe in your ability, your reliability. I believe that you are truthful. I believe, that I believe, oh God, Father, in you without investigation. Oh, Lord, I believe that you are real. I believe, oh God, Father, I believe that you are real in my family. I believe, oh God, about your demonstration on power in RCCG. I believe it, oh God. I believe it, oh God. I believe it. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to tell the Lord if paraventure we have many that still live in unbelief, just as that man told Jesus to say, help my unbelief. Say, Father, Father. in the name of Jesus, in, of Jesus. In, this month, in this month that you are calling us to trust you, help the heart of every of our member that is not trusting you yet. Talk to the Lord. Help them, O oh Lord, Father. Help them, help them in the heart of all our members that are not trusting you. Father, help them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, Father, Father, we trust you for supernatural supply. Abundance and increase. And provision. As individual, as a church, and as a nation. Father, help us. As we trust in you, take us out of inflation in Nigeria and recession and devaluation of Naira. Take us out. I want you to open your mouth and pray. Take us out as we trust you for provision abundance. Take us out of inflation, recession, and devaluation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, Father, we trust you for direction, strategic direction, and leadership direction. For our nation, leadership direction for our church, for every family. We receive insight and revelation of way forward as the church is reopened. I want you to talk to the Lord. Father, we receive today leadership direction for our nation, leadership direction for our church, OTP, for every member. We receive continuous insight and revelation now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, Father. we trust you for safety. For our, for our nation. We trust you for intervention in the security of our nation. We trust you for safety for our individual lives and family. We declare today <coughs> there shall be no loss, no calamity or tragedy in our lives and in this church in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that we trust you for intervention for security of our nation. Oh Lord, for intervention and security of our life and our family. There shall be no loss, no calamity, no tragedy in our lives and in our church in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I connect with strength. I connect with wearilessness and tirelessness. I receive baptism of supernatural strength. In the name of Jesus. Father, we receive baptism of supernatural strength. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are going to say, Father, we receive this month of August. The souls, 
that you meant for us in this house. Resources that you have released for us in this house. Divine visitations. Miracles and favor that you have for us in this house this month. We receive it in the name of Jesus. We receive it, we receive it. We receive it, we receive it. We receive it, we receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. As you've spoken in his ears, so shall he do for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We decree that this prayer will not go down the drain. But we receive the reply of our prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we say, as we begin to trust the Lord the more, we will be seeing the evidence of our trust in the name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Ghost, help us to trust you from our hearts. Amen. And we declare today that the month of August will bat unusual opening for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, by ways will become highway for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. There shall be multiplied divine visitations starting from tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Evil people will never take charge of our land and our lives. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right now we want to partake of the communion table. Please get your elements and as you partake of it, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, we want to partake of the communion table because we are trusting the Lord and the Lord we honor our trust in Jesus' name. Amen. And what I want to, uh, the focus for this communion tonight is do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. In Luke chapter 22, verse 19, it says, And he took bread and gave thanks, and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Amen. We do this in obedience to the clear command of the Lord Jesus Christ. We do this in obedience to the clear command of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to know that the history behind the Last Supper is something we need to understand. The Passover was the most important festival uh, on the Jewish calendar and was of crucial value to their nation. It, it, um, it, it actually com commensurates... Uh, God's deliverance of the Hebrew in the land of Egypt, in the land of slavery. And it was 100 years prior to the life of Jesus before he came. It was there years before Jesus came around. A lasting memorial to the saving work of God. God knew that man can forget, particularly when he brings them to comfort. And we can begin to share his glory. So he told them that always do this to remind your children, I am the one who deliver you. It is not by your strength. It is not by your power. So as a devout Jew, Jesus observed the Passover with his disciples each year in Jerusalem. On the night before he was crucified, he sent some of his disciples to make preparation for the Passover feast. In Luke chapter 22, verse 7 to 13, because of time, I will read. Jesus also said, we should do this in remembrance of him so that we will not forget what he did and will not begin to share part of his, well, share his glory. When we don't obey, as he said, then we, will be, uh, then we are saying we don't trust him. And I want us to know that when we don't do this in remembrance of him, as you just come, maybe you just do it religiously, when you don't trust God, what can happen? Because if you are not doing it in remembrance, that means you don't trust him. You don't believe him. You don't believe him. You remember what I did. I say, well, when you partake of the communion, remember the miracle, the things I performed. Remember I came to save you so that we can trust his saving grace. Amen? Amen. So when we don't trust him, what happened? When we are not trusting God, we are prone to anxiety and haste. We are very anxious. Because I'm not trusting God. If I'm not trusting God, anxiety just comes in and it changes the tune. Amen? Amen? Jesus knew that his disciples also will become anxious. So he said, do this in remembrance of me. Because of certain things that will happen around you. So that anxiety will not overtake you. Number two, what happened? We start claiming credit. When you don't put your trust in him. For things God did in us or God did through us or do, did by us, we begin to claim credit for it. Amen? Amen? We begin to claim credit for it because when you trust him, when those things come, you know he's the one that did it. But when you don't, that is why he said we should do this in remembrance of him. When we don't remember that he's the one who did it, he's the Lord that he led us, we may take Panadol and think it's Panadol that healed us. Amen? Amen. So it brings a lot of trust and judgment of God later. When you read Acts 12, 
uh, 21 to 23, he says King Herod, we know King Herod, he did not give God any credit. He was struck with a deadly disease and, and the Bible said Herod died. Amen? Amen? So the sin of pride, ingratitude is deadly sin. The reason why ingratitude comes is that we don't remember certain things. When God does something for us, we begin to claim the glory. The remedy for that is to honor and thank God in, in daily, on a daily basis. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, he said, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. That is so clear. Number three, what happened? We stop asking God for help. When you don't trust him, you don't ask him for help. But Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me so that you know that I'm your helper. When you need help, you call me. Ha. It is a big problem when we get to that level. So the Bible makes, the, 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 the many times repeats, ask. God wants to help, God wants us to help, God wants to help us, so he wants us to ask him. May the Lord help us to be asking him in Jesus' name. He said, do, he said, do not do it with your own strength. Depend on God. And what will happen? He will honor what you're asking for him. So practice prayer every day and you will learn how to ask and depend on God. If you don't express it, your need to God in prayer, you cannot grow in your trust in him. Believe in the power of prayer and, and his goodness. Number four, when we don't remember what happened, we stop trusting God in difficult times. We forget how good God is. In Romans chapter 5, verse 3, remind us that we can have joy even in trouble because problems are good for us, for they produce patience, character, hope, and make us stronger. And Romans 8, 28 confirmed this to us, that God works out everything for our good. Amen? Amen. And number five, we, uh, we become pessimistic about the future. It means we lose hope. We lose hope about the future. We can lose hope. Jesus did not want us to lose hope. He said we should do this in remembrance of him. When we remember his act on earth, we will not lose hope. We can lose hope only if we do not believe that God is always there to help us. No matter what we have done, David in Psalm 27 verse 13 to 14 says that he will have despaired if he had no faith in God's goodness. And he waited for the Lord. So do you wait for the Lord and ask him first to help you? If you are fighting despair, discouragement, <laughs> I tell you today, and you are fighting doubt as you partake of this communion today. Those things, the life in Christ will surge back in you to give you life and they will dispense out of your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your hope will come alive in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we want to partake of the communion and the Lord himself will divinely let this build trust in us because Jesus trusted the Father to die for three days. Is a risk, but he trusted the father that he will wake him up. And that that is in him, that made him trust that his father will wake him up, will always will come alive in us as we partake of the communion in Jesus' name. Amen. And before we partake of the communion, you are hearing me this evening, you've not given your life to Jesus. I want us to know that giving your life to Jesus comes from the foundation of trust that I can lay my life on, in, him, in his hands. And this evening, you know you want to lay your hands in his hand, your life in his hands, I want you to pray this prayer with me as you are listening to me wherever you are upon the surface of the earth. And as you do, the Lord of hosts himself will receive you into the beloved in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say with me, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, come I come to you today just as I am. Forgive me my sin and make me your own. This day, Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you died and resurrected on the third day. And this day, I say forward ever with you, backward ever with the devil. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for the life of your children and for the grace they receive, oh God, Father, to turn to you. And I declare today that in the name of Jesus, that same grace will multiply in their life. And they will live their life for you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Receive the grace to overcome flesh and sin. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we consecrate this table to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Bless it, O Lord, and let it be to the nourishment of our body. Let the seed of trust that is in Christ be implanted in us and let it grow. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For I receive from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat the bread. In the same manner, I also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord dead till he comes. In the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. and in the name of the Holy Ghost, Amen. I declare that no one will eat to damnation. Amen. And the mercy of God qualify us as we eat. Let's drink the wine. Can we begin to talk to the Lord? Can we begin to thank him for giving us the opportunity to remember him, giving us the opportunity to partake of this communion, to receive the seed in him. For what a man eats is what man is. We have eaten of him today and we know for sure that is in us. Father, thank you for opportunity. Oh Lord, thank you for opportunity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And I pray for you today that as hills round Jerusalem, so the Lord surround his own, he will surround you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not be moved and you will not be defeated in the name of Jesus. Amen. The grace to trust the Lord in the midnight, in the daytime, Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you look up to him, he will not turn his back against you. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. Shalom.